anything you need for Halloween, this is Haunted School. And in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing my very first animatronic of 2024. This is actually a new animatronic, and um, it came all the way from the US. Um, as you can see, it is the Home Depot 7 foot Universal Monsters Frankenstein. And as you can see, it is practically just a shipping box, um, that, uh, as this one was brought in the uh, halfway to Halloween. Say all that Home Depot had on. This is actually my very first Home Depot animatronic, if you're not including the Grave Digger that um, that they did a couple of years back. Um, but yeah, this is so cool. The box is abs absolutely massive, as you can see. Um, it do I really wasn't expecting it to be as big. As you can see, it says Seven Foot Animated Frankenstein. And yeah, there you go. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to um, unbox this for you guys. As you can see, it's very cool because it does have some printed instructions on the uh, left si left hand side right there. As you can see, they are very nice, and of course, with, with them being printed, you will um, um, you'll never lose them if you do keep this box. So um, I very much advise you do keep this box, the shipping box. And uh, yeah, it does come in two boxes. The inner box actually is just a plain box. Um, I have heard that on the um, when he does get released in stores, he's going to have a really nice printed box, so that's really nice to know. But there you go, that's how to pack him, as you can see from the top. Um, it's very good to know this, because this guy is very hard to pack away. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and unbox him. That right there are all the parts for Frankenstein's monster, and wow, he looks so cool with, um, with everything all laid down on the floor. And um, there's some really cool detail bits, as you can see, such as the uh, giant boots, as you can see here, the proper clunky Frankenstein boots that he's well known for. You can see we've got the arms right here, you've got his hands, which are really nicely sculpted. These are unique sculpts, so as you can see, he's got all the cuts in them and everything. Um, they look really cool, and they're really big too. Um, you've got a UK converter adapter, which I brought this for him with knowing that he's a US prop, and uh, that'll work nicely with him. Um, you've got the box of the adapter in itself. You've got the upper torso mechanism um, piece, um, with, well, that's the arm mechanism on and everything. You've got the base right there with the foam covers on, which are, of course I'll be taking off when he's set up. You've got a couple of poles right there, you've got the knees and the uh, upper legs. You got the uh, the shoulder piece, which is a blow molded frame, pretty much, and you got the uh, you got the leg um, tubes right there. You got the hip loop and the clothes. And the cool thing about him is that he does come with some printed instructions, as you can see right here. They are in colour, so um, that is really good on seasonal versions. His part right there, because they could easily uh, just give it black, give it black and white, like some of the uh, instructions we've had in the past. I've got to say, I really do love the illustrations of the prototype right here. He does look stunning. Um, but yeah, it just goes over how to set him up pretty much. Um, very well detailed, I must say. That's basically how the module works. So, uh, getting on back to Frankenstein right here, I'm going to um, go ahead and set this guy up. So let's proceed on with the set up. So first off, we're going to go ahead and lay the base down on a flat surface. As you can see right here, we um, put the lower leg poles in right there. And then we uh, get the boots. They just slide over and interlock onto the base over at the right angle. And after that, we're going to uh, put the knee um, bend poles in pretty much. And they just attach onto the other poles that we just put in. Um, they snap lock right in. And then we put the the leg tubes on which will give him some nice shape when he's got the trousers on um, so what we do next we've got the trousers right there um, we're going to uh, try and find the leg holes for them and there's actually a front and back to these um, the front is actually where the freaky fabric is at the front so that's good to know um, so they're on right there so we're going to put the crossbar support on as you can see right there 
and there's a hip loop. The hip loop does have a clip in place so it won't fall out. So that's another great quality control thing um, for seasonal visions. Um, so it really won't fall apart in the wind or anything. Um, but yeah, with all that in place then, it really gives him some nice shape in the legs. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to connect the upper torso um, onto there. And then we're going to put the, the shoulder frame on, which that also does have screws. And uh, that attaches in just like so. And with that in place, it probably marks a good time to put in the adapter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the universal plug right at the end, um, just so I can plug this into the UK mains. Um, with this plug, it does um, look like it'd work on um, on UK mains without having to get a new one, so that's always good. So now I'm going to attach on the head, and he is absolutely massive. He does have a few cables that plug in, as you can see under his neck, um, which all wire through him. Then we're going to put the waistcoat on, um, which goes on quite easily. It does on Velcro at the back, so that's good to note. And he's also got his infrared sense, which is actually inside the jacket itself. So now we're going to hook some hook both of his arms into place, which um, have the um, normal SVI uh, connectors, um, which get them in place, which is always good. And um, last but not least, we have the hands. So uh, those can just hook in and go on with the Velcro. And with that done, I'm going to smarten him up, and then we'll get on with the review. So there you have it, there is a full on look at Frankenstein all fully set up and he is an absolutely outstanding prop. I'm absolutely blown away by his likeness alone, it, it just it just looks so realistic. Looks like he's just been taken out of the film and he is about 7 foot as you can see, he's absolutely massive. You can see how he towers over Brain Monster in the background. Um, but yeah, he does look really cool, just as his overall stance with his arms out and everything. So now, let's get on to some further details. So starting with his head, this is a good place to start. As you can see, this is probably the most detailed part on him. And straight off with that, you can really see that this guy really resembles the Boris Karloff look of the monster. And he even has the iconic flat top head. And he's got some realistic hair at the top, which is really cool. The head's actually made of kind of like a latex or silicone material. He's got some really nice detail, including the cuts and, uh, and the wrinkles in the face. He's got the classic squinted Frankenstein eyes, which these are going to move in a minute. And with the serve emotion on his face, it is absolutely amazing. He's got his um, iconic black lips. <laughs> just as Frankenstein should have, just as just like the dark pits around his eyes. He's got even more cuts on his neck and even the uh, two bolts either side, which these actually do light up and they do look amazing, especially in the dark. But yeah, that's his face. And of course, it's really a nice shade of green as well. Um, so getting onto his outfit, the outfit is the only real downside, I think, to this guy. It, is, it does feel very cheap. Um, the, the coat, the jacket itself is um, quite thin and uh, the, just the details on it and everything really, I think, could have been done better. It definitely resembles Frankenstein's look regardless. Um, it, you may have to uh, button his jacket up to get the effect from the film, but that, that's doable. Um, you can see he's got these little freaky fabric cloth bits that are hanging off random bits on his jacket and his, his, his undershirt, which has got this grey shirt and also his infrared sensor pokes through it. And probably one of my other favourite parts of this guy are his hands. As you can see they are absolutely huge hands if you can see that in size comparison. Um, his nails are actually painted black and uh, there's actually so much detail on it. You can see um, there's loads of wrinkles, there's cuts around the wrist to see to show where um, he's stitched, he's been put together. Um, one thing that actually is missing all the stitches are around him, um, which I wish were added, but it's one of those. It, it's, um, it's such a cool sculpt and it looks so realistic. And getting onto his trousers, nothing really too much to him, but once again, they are, it's a really thin material. I'm really not a fan of the materials they used on this guy. Um, but getting onto his boots, his boots are actually quite cool with how clunky they are. It definitely yeah, gives off classic Frankenstein's monster vibes. And yeah, that is practically him. Um, that's all, all I have to say for him, really. Um, I'll give you some side shots of him right here, so as you can see. Um, here, he, here he looks from the side, he does come out very far. Um, you definitely do need quite a big space in a room to display this guy in. Or if you have him outside, of course, you have really no limits. But um, here's the other side, he is stunning. 
He's, he's a stunning looking prop overall and the posture of him just looks quite terrifying as well. And right from the back you can see his the size of his shoulders. And his, I'm go, now I'm going to give you a look at his module from the back. You can see his shirt does on Velcro and you can see all the inner workings of this guy with the wires and everything. He does have a switch where you can switch him from continuous to infrared sensor or, or um, lights only. I think he also has an off mode as well. And uh, he's got a step pad jack and a volume control which can be turned from extremely loud, I must admit, to uh, mute um, if you just want him moving in the background. So as you can see here is the size comparison between me and Frankenstein. He is absolutely massive as you can see. Um, he definitely is about 7 foot. You can even see Brain Monster in the background. And he's about 6 foot. And he literally just towers right over me. I'm um, just basically just below his neck as you can kind of see right there. Um, but yeah, he, he is massive. And um, it's not even just like, it's like how much space he actually takes up. Um, as you can see his arms really span out really quite wide and far so you definitely do need a big room to put this guy in or a big area and he just looks so cool so that pretty much concludes the review segment of this video and now i'm going to plug him in and show you this guy in action So there you go, there is the Home Depot 2024 Frankenstein's monster in action. And what can I say, this prop has, ever since he has been revealed, this guy, um, he's been on my wish list. I have to say, um, I've always wanted a proper licensed Frankenstein's monster prop. I'm going to start off with, a, with giving a wrap up of his look. So overall, he does look great. The detail on this guy is incredible. I am very, very happy with it how this guy came out. I think he is probably the best um, budget animatronic Frankenstein you could possibly get. Um, he definitely does resemble the, uh, the universal Frankenstein as you can see in his face. Um, that is very well sculpted I, m I must say. And um, even the outfit, um, you can definitely see the lightness with how it's meant to look. And just his overall size, like Frankenstein should be tall and this guy absolutely hits the nail on the head with that. Um, but in terms of quality, he is a bit of a hit and miss in some points, I'd say. I'd say parts of him, like the head, the boots and the hands, and also the inner structure, like the poles, that is all really good. And um, especially how they've added screws to like, the, shoulder connect the shoulder connection, that is a big step in the right direction. Um, but he does, um, where he does lack it is his costume, but I think that has probably been um, cheaped out mainly because he is a licensed prop and to keep the cost down that might have been the reason why he's like that um, but it is, it is a shame he doesn't have a better outfit but he probably could be customised and uh, in terms of animation this is his strongest point by far his animation is great like as soon as, soon as he does his first roar on his first freeze you know that you're in for something impressive like he has moving eyes um, they move side to side up and down his eyelids move, um, they open and close, and you can even see the blood vessels in his eyes. That's another great de touch of detail in his eyes. And his mouth moves and his neck moves. His neck uh, movement is kind is kind of um, looks a bit unnatural in a, in a way. But at the same time, with the survey motion, it does look really cool because he, it makes him look at in every direction. 
um, which that's really cool. I really do love the, the bolt lights in his neck and also um, how they light up on certain phrases, that's a really cool touch. And they also do have their own lights only mode so the bolts can just flash on their own. And he also does move his arms which is, a, which is really cool. He is definitely by far the most advanced item I own. In terms of the phrases themselves, I really don't think they could have been done better. Like, Frankenstein, like, he doesn't talk, he growls, um, just like he should do. That's perfect, he has four phrases in total. They all include some really cool background sounds, they include the Wilhelm scream. And also, two of his phrases for bolts like all. Along with some phrases from Dr. Frankenstein himself, which really couldn't be more fitting for this prop. Currently, he does retail for $280, I believe, at Home Depot. Um, I believe they will be restocking him uh, once he comes in store. I think he, are, I think he has sold out currently yeah, um, for when they had him for the halfway to Halloween sale. But he can be found on, e on eBay, but be careful of the prices you do pay because you don't want to overpay for this guy. I actually did end up buying this one off eBay um, around, around the time he started getting, to, getting released to the public. As of course I'm in the UK, but I think he's really going to pay off with um, how many reactions he'll end up getting in the haunts, because um, everyone's going to see him and be like, hey look, it's Frankenstein, and uh, yeah, he's, he's a very recognisable character, and I just love uh, these licensed props, and I really hope Seasonal Visions, and yeah, that's the company he's made by, uh, I really hope they continue making stuff like this. Because he is definitely one of my favourite props in my collection, and uh, let alone what the be one of the best props that Home Depot have ever sold, in my opinion. So that's about it for this video, guys. Please uh, give us a like and also subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed. And um, got plenty more unboxings and reviews coming in the coming weeks and days. And um, we also got the Home Depot Yoda, which I'll be reviewing uh, very very soon as well. So thank you for watching, and remember, anything you need for Halloween, this is Haunted School.